But it is time, ladies and gentlemen, for Plank of the Week. And I'm delighted to say that today uh, we have two very, very famous people joining us. Kevin O'Sullivan, uh, of course, the evening time host of Talk Radio from 7 till 10, and Belinda De Lucy, former MEP for the Brexit Party. Now, um, we should probably not say ladies first, but I'm going to say it anyway, uh, because oh. I think you should go first with your first plank nomination of the week. Can I just say I'm week. identifying as a woman, so... You can't. Oh, OK. And, and can Sorry. we just give a trigger warning? I just slightly I'm mispronounced that. identifying as a lady. <laughs> oh, are you? Yes. Well, can we give a trigger warning to Cambridge students now who have been very upset with the term ladies recently, have they? even though they're not my plank of yes. the week? Yes. We should so. actually have a warning. You know how they do those warnings yes. at the start of movies? Yes. You know, some of the scenes in this might be disturbing for yes. you. And so if you're particularly woke, <laughs> you won't really enjoy it. <laughs> but now you they cancel help. the term trigger warnings because the word trigger warnings or the term That's trigger true. warnings it's will triggering. frighten them. <laughs> yes. Who was it that had a horse called Trigger? It was Roy Rogers, wasn't it? That yeah. a horse yeah, called, called Trigger. trigger. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well. well, I love that you call me a lady. You're probably the only one that does. Well, um, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what you are. That's what I'm going to call you. Thank you. So my first plank of the week, it has to be the Brit Awards. Oh, yeah. yeah Whether yeah, you watch yeah. them or not. I mean, they, they have done so. They have submitted to the altar of woke and they have scrapped the male and female categories for their 2022 awards show. Quite, I think it's... Quite right, too. Do you know, I did a, a rant about yeah. this. I actually said the reason this is a good idea is yeah. because it will be a lot shorter. Shorter, because now <laughs> they won't have to hand out best male singer, yes. best female singer. They'll just have best singer. I but fear, you, I fear yeah. you're wrong there, Mike, because I know what they'll fill the time. Oh with. yes, preaching on Pre climate change, elongated speeches by the winds. <sighs> it will. It's very painful, and it's all because one of the reasons they're planks as well is the motivation behind it is a massive baby nappy tantrum <laughs> from Sam Smith, the king of narcissists. Oh, Sam, what, Sam? <laughs> I can't take it anymore. <laughs> Get, <laughs> come and somebody come and rescue me from my twelve. My swimming pool's too. Oh, do, do you remember the lockdown photo yes. he sent around sobbing while Captain Moore was doing hundreds of laps yes. of his garden raising money for the NHS at right. age 100? Right. There was Sam Smith at his £12 million mansion sobbing at how awful lockdown was for millionaires. Um, I mean, this is the guy that has said, I want award shows to be more reflective of society. Well, great, mate. How about then award shows are filled with 80% white, 23% OAPs, 18% disabled, 51% women? Because that's what he's literally saying. Yes. The woke are going to end up eating the woke. And let's be honest, mm. most men are going to win now. And right. then the women are going to cry sexism. And so they're going to say, gonna yeah, why can't any women? Well, they're now, they're, 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 <laughs> but also now what they're going to have to do is they're going to have to look very seriously at the, at the list that they put together. And they're going to have to make it all about quotas, aren't they? Yeah. They're going to have to say, well, if we've got, say, I don't know, five nominees. Oh, no, we can't do that because that'll mean there's three <laughs> and two. So we better make it six or maybe ten. Yes. They'll oh. have more nominations. It was a whole world of pain all, now. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, the Brit Awards slumped last year. 800,000 less viewers really? last year. They're almost I, on a mission to get I'm, the lowest I, viewing audience possible. Yeah, I possible. can't believe anybody watched it anymore. Last, last time it was interesting was when that bloke from Chumbawamba threw water over John Prescott. <laughs> I was there. I was sitting <laughs> at the well, next yeah. table. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was sitting at the next And that table. was how long ago was that then? It must be Oof. like... 15, 20 years? In, in the early noughties. I yeah. Early noughties. I loved the Blur Maybe and Oasis 90s. fights at the, at the Brits. These these kind of yes. fun alpha male, like and gnarly, And not Jarvis Cocker running out when Michael yes. Jackson was performing. Now, well, now who, who can forget uh, uh, three foot two Samantha Fox <laughs> and six foot eight uh, Mick Fleetwood presenting, <laughs> the worst <laughs> presenting double act in the history of show. But at least it was It fun. has been a car crash year yeah, after yeah. year yeah. after year. And you're right, Belinda, the audience is plummeting. It's plummeting. And this will make it even Worse. The problem we have to worry about there is, of course, uh, the Brits has now set the mould and all other award ceremonies will do the same. So well, the Oscars to, will they? be no more best actress, best actor. Uh, it'll all be uh, single gender. And will where's be, the fun in will that? It be where the fun? is the and fun in that? It's, that. Always, it's always the women that lose out because also if men can identify as women, you know, what's the point nowadays anyway of having a women's category? It means nothing. So the whole thing is basically going to make it harder for women to ever win anything. And that's fine. Maybe we should up our game. Mm. But at the same time, we do have a different experience in the pop industry. You know, we have babies. We have to stay at home. We can't tour as much. It would have been nice to have kept the categories. By the way, can I just make a point yeah. about babies? Stella Creasy's annoying me this week. Right? Yeah, yeah, well. Stella Creasy, every time she pops up, she's got a baby with her. She was being interviewed. Is it hers? Well, I think so. I hope so. <laughs> I don't know if she's got. Maybe I don't it's know. a new virtue yeah. signal accessory. You go up to a woman with the baby. Goes that yours? Yeah. Um, excuse me, I'm a politician. Excuse me. Can you lend me your baby. No, but she was on question good. time, right? She was on question time on last Thursday night. Yeah. She didn't have the baby out with her actually on camera, but mm. the baby was with her. I don't know whether she doesn't have a partner. I don't know whether that's 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 something I shouldn't say. But you know, she's being interviewed on on um, College Green down at Westminster, and uh. she's got the baby in a papoose. 
strapped oh, to her. Maybe and that's I'm the sure new thing. the new thing is, and I'm sure that I'll be castigated horribly because, of course, she could take the baby to work. Why shouldn't she? <laughs> well, because it's a baby. And, you know, the baby should be somewhere else, shouldn't well, perhaps it? Perhaps it's nice <laughs> for the baby to be out of bright Well, light. I wouldn't take my baby to work. Bring your baby to work, uh, so <laughs> look, there, There's your germ of food. You know. Well, do you know, there was a story we can tell about that without naming the individual. You may know the story. It's a colleague of ours, a former reporter, still a reporter, actually. Um, and he was left in charge of his child, who was about one, I think, at the time, and, he, and it was his day off, and he got a call from the office to go to Amsterdam. And he didn't say, I can't go because I'm looking after the baby. He just went, yeah, OK, then. And he tried to sort of hunt around, because his wife was working as well, tried to hunt around for, uh, <laughs> for somebody <laughs> to look kid. after the baby. Couldn't find anybody. He went anyway. <gasps> she came home um, oh some God. hours later, and, he'd le I mean, he'd left the kid in a sort of safe environment. But basically, yeah. it just disappeared. <gasps> yeah, with some um, cigarettes, okay. maybe, yeah. Scotch, so, yeah. so maybe let's just let women take. Also, you don't know when the uh, women have been left. How on did their his own. wife take that? Not she that divorced one. him. Yeah. <laughs> fair news. <laughs> I, mean, that's I fair. think that's probably fair. <laughs> yeah. but, 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 but I just, I mean, I, 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 I'm sure that um, there will be people that will say that I'm old-fashioned and I'm wrong. But, I mean, I don't think people expect you to turn up for work every day if you've got a baby with a baby, do they? Unless you have to. If it's a case of having to, then well, I Well, she's an MP. I would have thought... It, she's on a she's salary where a reasonable she can... salary. I mean, it might be an argument to say, why isn't there a crash at the at, exactly. at Parliament, which there probably should be. But you know it's going to be men next who kind of start coming with the boosters and it's all going to be... ja sin Da. Yes. Oh, yeah. She set the mould with oh, her, you know, oh, breastfeeding. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And that she went on to get the top job. Yeah. So maybe that's what Stella's thinking. Oh. This maybe. baby is a good career move. Yeah, yes. well, she needs to get her teeth done as well if she wants to be like the Cinder Ardent. Nice. <laughs> the, only woman who, the only woman who goes to the dentist and asks for more Stella, teeth to be put in. Stella, where are <laughs> can I have more teeth, please? I don't think I can fit oh, any well, more in just now. Now I feel as a woman. You've got 700 Sorry. already. This is now turned into some. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Attack. All right. Poor Stella. OK. Well, she's not being nominated, so that's one that's thing. True. Because I can't do that, obviously. So, um, well, Adele is probably going to win all the Brits this year anyway, of isn't she? Of course she is. She's, she's going to be Mother of everything. And she's a woman. She may make a feature appearance later on, so I won't say too much yeah. about her. Kevin, who's your first one? Uh, it's Stella Creasy for Keep Taking Her Baby. No, no, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, uh, the... the <laughs> sorry, Stella. <laughs> The parole board. Yeah, excellent uh, choice. Which, uh, with its... Uh, Nobody knows who's very, on it, right? We don't know who's no, on it. No, exactly right. So, but two, it was in 2019, mm. two years ago, uh, they very nearly, they wanted to release the taxi rapist yeah. John Warboy. Yeah. There was a huge outcry. Mm. Uh, one of his victims, by the way, was uh, Carrie Johnson. Yes, right. Uh, well, huge, it was down to her that he was kept yeah, in. Yeah, huge did a great outcry job saying, we cannot let this monster back on the streets yeah. because he'll re-offend. Fortunately, in that instance, uh, the Ministry of Justice backed the mm. bid to keep him inside and he was kept inside. Two years later, Colin Pitchforth, the parole board, in its infinite wisdom, decide this man is ready to be let back into society. Ask anyone. The guy is a sex fiend yeah. psychopath. But they were also he asked... cannot cure these no. people. No, you, but they were also asked by Alberto Costa, MP, who we get on mm. quite regularly here, um, to re-examine the case because he had been speaking to the families. He's the MP for the local area near Leicester. Um, and the families were absolutely horrified at the idea that this was going to happen. And they re-examined the case and did it anyway. Yeah. And you just think, well, that's what the point. That's the point. thinking? That's the point, uh, that uh, you had a similar outcry uh, that we heard when uh, mm. they were fixing to re release John Warboys. Yeah. Uh, but this time, uh, actually, the Ministry of Justice didn't really do very much and the parole board won the day. Mm. Uh, the two victims were Linda Mann and Dawn Ashworth and the mother of Dawn Ashworth, Barbara Ashworth is her name, just said, I can't believe they're doing yeah. this. And I, she said, I've got one message for them, a leopard never changes its spots. Absolutely. Uh, and, you know, we, psychopaths, you cannot cure them. They do not get no. any better. Now, the point about Colin in Pitchford is he's 61 years mm. old. He's, in other words, still sexually active. Yeah. And, uh, of course, they released him. You know, they they, they demanded that their uh, decision should be respected. He was released. And uh, apparently since uh, September, spent most of his time down the local park, posing as a park keeper, hanging outside mm. three local schools, approaching yeah. teenage girls. Yes, uh, but, exactly. You know, in other words, they made a decision that directly endangered society. Yeah. Yeah. More to the point, yeah. directly endangered young women. Mm. 
outrageous. Yes. Now, we know, uh, we don't know who's on this parole board. Right. And until they're, it is going at the moment through uh, what they call a root and branch reorganization yeah. due to the John Which Walters. usually means they'll change yeah. the name yeah. of it in a couple of years. Uh, do nothing, do about nothing about else. else. So we don't know who's on this parole board, but I've got a fair idea mm. most of them read The Guardian. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. They believe yeah. in the reforming nature of prison and after well, if you talk, yeah. Years, yeah. And I mean, I was saying to somebody today, it's not a one size fits all. You know, sure, some people can be released and some people can be rehabilitated, but not these characters. No, and no, but point... if you kill a child, you're away for life. That yeah. should just be a given. Well, also with this guy, had he been sentenced later on, once they brought in the full life term, he would have got a full life term yeah. anyway, so he wouldn't have been parolable. Uh, but what they say is, when these people were imprisoned, and we're talking about mm. Pitchfork and McGreevy, uh, we didn't have in place this whole life That's sentence. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Uh, and, and this is the kind Which of... Which doesn't mean they have to be released. But this is still the kind of legal eagle nonsense mm. that leaves ordinary yeah. citizens mm. in a state of bemusement. Yeah. And it, yeah, it's the it, left-wing it, idea that, that yeah. criminals yes. are victims yeah. of society. And it's, all, it's not and their fault. Like, no, and it actually puts so many people at yeah. risk, especially mm. women. All these politicians beating their chests about protecting women. Yeah. And they let men off let pretty these guys much. Out. I mean, the only free. thing that you can be said about the pitchfork case is at least they were monitoring him properly because they did find out what he was doing. And that at least is gives you a some small costs crumb. So much money. No, I'm not saying it's yeah. a good thing. I'm saying it's one small yeah. crumb of comfort that at least he's now back behind bars. What I worry about is that they'll somehow, in a year's time, decide to release him again. Yeah, but well, you know, I, I've got a feeling he won't get out again. Well, let's but, hope not. But, but uh, it is this fallback. This is what they always say because if you take Wayne Cousins and Sarah Everard, yeah. though, he got this new thing: a, a whole life sentence can never be released. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the days of Pitchfork's imprisonment and McGreevy and various other yeah. monsters, even even actually um, uh, Ian Brady and Mara Hill, oh, yeah. there was no such thing mm. as a full life sentence. Right. Uh, and they said, oh, well, you see, legally we can't uh, mm -hmm. give them a whole lot of rubbish. Yeah, right. Rubbish. No, I know. Let's rubbish. have a bit of common sense. Let's do Don't it. ever let these people no, out. Exactly. They, won't, they won't democratise it. They'll exactly. never give us a chance yeah. to vote on sentencing. Yeah. Yeah. No. And that's why well, I think we have never got a say over this. No, no. more in order. No, I know. Well, I'm going to go uh, back to the royal family for my first nominee, and it's going to be for a change, not uh, Meghan and Harry, even though they, I, I have got a possibility of carrying them over <laughs> because they've been so plankish lately. It's just run real. This time it's Prince Charles. You might remember Prince Charles went up to COP26. Um, his mother couldn't make it, so he had to go and do all the glad handing and mingling with all the and various Prince people. And Prince William, yeah. And Prince William as well. Uh, but he also made a speech in which he talked about making everything greener and everybody doing their bit to save the planet and, you know... He presumably drove up there in his... In his Crisis. He calls it... He says... Crisis. I mean, he, he says, he claims that he, that he runs his Aston Martin on cheese and wine. I don't yeah. believe that for a second. Do you? Oh, no, I believe it, but it costs about 300 grand to convert your car to that. What, to cheese and wine? Yeah, you can't. Well, it's stuff. not only cheese, but it's just all rubbish. You can do it. Yeah. Uh, but no well, one like else can afford it. Like vegetable but, waste. You know, well, yeah. most people can't afford the Aston Martin, never yeah. mind converting it. Yeah. I mean, to be <laughs> fair. Certainly the but anyway, yeah. he certainly would have gone up there with plenty of security. Loads of Range Rovers, no doubt, driving around. Anyway, it turns out that he's not as green as he pretends to be, right? Because down at um, the Queen's Norfolk Estate, Sandringham, they've got a winter lights display going on, which he's in charge of. <laughs> and guess what powers the winter light display? Go on, go ahead, Tony. Diesel generators. <laughs> <laughs> not cheese and wine, No, oh, because guess oh. what? You can't get generators that are powered with anything else because the reason they generate electricity is because you need fuel to generate the electricity. Yeah. So, that's what he's doing, uh, and apparently um, it's got 60,000 bulbs. Now, I'm a bigger fan of Christmas as anybody, but do you really need 60,000 bulb light displays at Sandringham to bring in the punters for whatever it is they're paying £18.50 each to walk through? You know these kind of winter wonderland type yeah. places? Hideous. I mean, I, you couldn't pay me to go into one. People are paying nearly 20 quid a time to go and see this stuff, and I don't know where the money goes, presumably to pay the bill for the electricity. Probably. One would have thought. And just as, a, as, a, as an aside, I see that uh, the Insulate Britain numpties were back at the weekend blocking Vauxhall Bridge and vowing uh, to continue to do it. Meanwhile, one of them, I think, on hunger strike in prison. Um, of course they are. I mean, you think they were, you know, actually battling some kind of really massive, you know, totalitarian force... Well, I think, I think the people suppressing them. <laughs> I think, you know, I think the people's vote lot when it dispersed, there was a core group there of mm. sort of middle class yuppies who didn't really have jobs, nothing to do, who no. were desperate to join the next protest. Yes, and that's where Extinction Rebellion yep. and and all these well, other they all did come out around about that time, vote. didn't they? Exactly, and they've got nothing to do with their time. Now, I think they're spending Christmas in 
in prison yeah, if, I'm, good. if I'm right. I hope and so. I think absolutely they good because so. they're hurting people. Yeah. Protest all you like. Well, there was a guy who was trying to get home to see his yeah. son, do you remember? And they yeah. just wouldn't let and him go. Ambulances. Yeah. And what did that guy say? It doesn't matter if ambulances can't no. get through. This message is really important. Right. It really and he isn't. didn't even insulate his own house. No, he really didn't. And, and it's he's, the hypocrisy it, of it. Is, it's absolutely unbelievable. But Prince Charles ought to know better. I mean, yeah. I'm not a fan of, of politicians uh, getting involved with the royal family, and neither am I involved, uh, a fan of the royal family getting involved in politics. I don't think they should. They certainly shouldn't be endorsing, you know, Boris Johnson's green agenda. <laughs> Idiots. Well, climate change should be the reserve of the wealthy and the bored. Yes. Because really, leave, leave poorer people alone. Well, poor if, people if, can't if, afford to talk about it because they're too yes, busy working. Exactly. If royal people and billionaires want to fancy pants their way around the climate change agenda, let, leave them to it. All the best to you, but just leave everyone else alone. Yeah, exactly right. Who's your second one, then? So my second one is a little bit more serious, yes. but I felt I, I read it and I was so shocked. This is the Toronto School Board. Ah, yes. Um, and they have with drawn support for events that feature um, uh, a written testament by a Yazidi girl um, called Nadia Morad. Now, Nadia won the 2018 Nobel Peace Prize because uh, having been enslaved by ISIS and shared around soldiers and bought and sold, seeing her mother and six brothers marched off to, to be killed, um, to ha she was forced to wear makeup before she was raped, she was gang raped so badly, she was left unconscious. This is her lived story under ISIS. Mm. And they have stopped her publication or any events that include her publication from happening because they say her testament might offend Muslims and encourage Islamophobia. And what makes me so angry about that is it smacks of the whole shut up for the sake of diversity thing that went on in this country. Yeah. Whereas you ring fence a group of people and you cannot criti criticize and scrutinize them if they belong to a certain faith. And that in itself fuels Islamophobia. The, the lib left bleeding heart lot don't understand. They actually increase uh, prejudice and Islamophobia by ring fencing them, saying they can't take partake in debate. Muslims can't defend their own faith. Well, of course they can. Everyday Muslims don't have anything to do with the terrorist organization in Syria. No. But, but apparently you just can't talk about it. So now you're like, not allowed to talk about similar it. Isn't this similar to that case in Birmingham? You know, when there was a school protest going on, a lot of parents were outraged because, um, you know, a lot of Muslims turned up to, 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 to complain about the fact that, you know, sexuality was being taught in school That's to right, their yeah, children. Right. Some of it was homosexuality, but it was just about education. It was sex education. Yeah. But the left didn't know what to do because they didn't know whether to accept the complaints from the Muslim community or defend the sex the LGBT, education yeah, the from the LGBT. Direction. So they didn't know what to do, so they just didn't do anything. Yeah, they so just they kind of paralysed. Same with the, uh, the, the grammar school teacher up in uh, yeah. Yorkshire, wasn't it, that uh, is still in exile, still hiding out because he had the temerity in a religious uh, affairs lesson to yeah. teach the kids about the Charlie Hebdo uh, exactly. cartoon. And yeah. if you look at the recent terror attacks from the Reading attack where three gay men were slaughtered, mm. that lasted a week. Yeah. Then you had David Amos, that, what, what was that in the headlines for a week, maybe? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and now yeah. you've had the car blow up outside a women's hospital that could have maimed and killed veterans and their children. And now that's gone from the news. But if it had been anyone else, they would have been scrutinised properly and talked about. But I feel like if it's infil infiltrating schools and now girls can't even talk about their experience under ISIS, it's actually damaging. It's linking Muslims to ISIS rather than separating yeah. them. So the left don't know what they're doing. They're, no. they're completely by me. So that's the, my plank of the wink. But I mean, the whole trans that... area has become completely and utterly kind of deranged anyway, hasn't it? Because you've got the JK Rowling story yeah. this week where she's been banned from taking part in the thing that she created yeah. on the grounds of her views on trans. We had Essex Police uh, who put out a tweet, I think, on Trans Awareness Day or something like that, uh, in which they talked about the number of people who had been killed because they were trans around the world. And people were going, well, hang on a minute, there's a lot of women killed yeah. in Britain during that same period. Why have you not put up a sort of memorial for that? And they then got so much abuse from the general public that they, they took it down, but then yeah. announced that they were going to investigate all the people that had been abusive uh, oh. for hate crime. They're ring fencing. And you're going, so you're yeah, now exactly. actually creating a criminal wave of people yeah. being abusive by putting something up yeah. there that doesn't the need to be there. the left sort of instinctively uh, sort of leap to the defence of the trans lobby, mm. Uh, what they're actually doing, you know, the trans lobby got every right to protest their corner, yeah. to fight their corner. But uh, when it gets taken up uh, on a grand scale by the left, uh, what they're essentially doing here, in many cases, they're cancelling women. 
there are women, you know, you don't hear men referred to as uh, penis pe people or... with penises. Yeah. Yeah. But you do all the time now hear of women being yeah. referred to as people with cervixes, mm. you know, people who get pregnant, people who menstruate. Yeah. Why? Why it's are we allowing yes. the cancellation of women? It's yeah. sexist. But it's also That's the, what it the is. abrogation of words to me. You know, they're using words in not the right context well, or not the right way. language as well. Yeah. I am being forced, and we all are being forced, because there's punishment if we don't, to use language that we don't believe in mm. and that we don't recognise. Mm. And women get it in the neck because it is trans women. It is the males who mm. identify as women, yeah. a small minority who of them. Who are driving it. Who do it, the trans community a disservice. They are stalking, harassing, threatening. The rape threats and death mm. threats J.K. Rowling has had from males, right. but because they wear a dress or identify as women, that suddenly cancels out That's their threat. No, the the thing is, though, doesn't. The thing is about J.K. Rowling, and I suspect uh, we three too, it's, it's just this. You know, I, I'm all for the trans lobby. You know, if you want to uh, cha change, you know, become uh, a different gender, you know, go for it. I, I support you all the way. Uh, and I will treat you if you, you know, you're now uh, a I trans I don't really woman. care whether they I do don't, it But I'll not. treat you as a woman. Yeah. I'll call you she. I'll, everything you want. But do not ask me uh, to deny the reality of your personal history that you used to be mm -hmm. a male. Right. You were yeah. born a male. Do, you know, I can't do that because no. I haven't got the intellectual capacity to deny fact. Yeah. Uh, and that's the problem. Right. And that's all J.K. But Rowling is saying. But that's what people get upset about. And that's the ridiculous nature yeah. of the argument, isn't and it? And if the whole gender thing, you know, doesn't concern you, it should do because yeah. it's about truth. Mm. And if they can make the public mm. or force the public into a lie about this, mm. there are plenty well, of other things they look can at, force look you. At what's happened to the Brits, you know, your yeah. first nomination. So, you know, these things, you know, when people say, oh, it doesn't really matter, and it may not in terms of a reward ceremony, but, I mean, it does... They are, things are changed. The world is a changing place yeah. as a result of... Because I think what people have worked out is that if you make enough noise about something for long enough, you'll get what you want. Yeah, yeah but women are... We are conditioned to being kind and saying, yes, and ten years ago we shared our bathrooms with trans women. It wasn't a problem. It was only when the extremists came along and started mm. this relentless attack on women mm. and girls mm. in schools as well... Because there's plenty of trans women saying, as well... No, I will fight ..who them on will the not take part in this battle as well... Many of trans women are against this. To be, yeah, of course. That's so the it's point. not... That's why I'm saying I mean, it does are, a disservice to the trans to, community. They're asking us to, to... I mean, they're, they're, what they say is because this person was in their minds, born a woman, born in the wrong body, yeah. has therefore always been a woman. OK, in their minds, sure, I'll even accept that, but biologically, you haven't always been a woman. Mm. And if the trans lobby would just allow us that little leeway mm. just to truth. just say, well, you know, you did, you were born biologically a male, then this whole dispute would be kind of mm. solved. So why can't you say trans women are trans women? It's the truth, it's yeah, fact, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It, yeah. it validates Absolutely. their existence. Absolutely. because that's, But if you say that now, you can't go into acting, yeah. you can't be a pop know, star. You, so many now yeah. areas you will never be allowed to go into unless you follow the mantra that is not it's the a, truth. But it's yeah. a denial of the it's truth. It's a strange yeah. situation, it's isn't it? It's ridiculous. What's your second one, Kevin? Uh, my second one is uh, uh, a GP called Dr David Lloyd. Oh, yes. Uh, he was on Julia Hartley Brewer's Breakfast mm. Show. Recently. I've had him on my show. Uh, and has written a piece, piece in the Daily Mail. Uh, and uh, basically he is for medical fascism. He is for uh, Britain copying uh, Austria yeah. and making uh, the COVID vaccination mandatory yeah. by law. He wants to live in a country where the government injects you with chemicals by law, by order of the law. Mm. Uh, and I, don't, I, th I feel, I put on Twitter this morning, I said, forgive him, he's thick. He knows not what he says. You know, don't tell me all doctors are really, really bright. They're not. Well, no, and that's why we shouldn't be ruled by doctors, yeah. because the doctors exactly, and the scientists right. might be good at what they do in their individual exactly. roles. Yeah, but they, what they're they not great not, at yeah. is understanding the human condition. Mm -hmm. or and even, common sense. And they're even it, having common sense, yeah. yeah. And I, you know, I, I, I know where he's coming from. He believes, I'm not sure he's exactly right, but he believes that mass vaccination will cure the COVID mm. problem. And he thinks that that because that's his job, is more important mm. than anything else in the world. Well, I'll tell you it's not, mm. because I'll tell you what is more important is that we do not live in a tyranny in an, under an authoritarian government uh, that will force you 
by law to undergo a medical procedure. It must never yeah. happen in this country. No. And David Lloyd should hang his head in I don't shame. think it ever will happen in this country. But also, but the, other thing is, bet on it. the other thing is... It's right, against the law at the, the moment. The other thing is, right, the law that, you can find, about that. that you can find loads of doctors that will say all sorts of different things. There was a guy uh, on TV over the weekend who's from the Oxford um, vaccination group or something like that, mm. the people who actually came up with it, who said, you know, actually, we'd be better off not giving boosters to people. We'd be better off giving those vaccines away to other countries who don't have any um, and so that they can make better use of yeah. them because frankly speaking he said if you've got two um, jabs you're basically 95% protected anyway now the government doesn't tell you that the government says you're only 60% protected with the two and you'll get 90 if you get the third one they can't all these people can't be right they're and all saying also different be, things will also they be forced then to get the fourth booster the yeah. fifth booster and it will never ever end oh. it reminds me the west was horrified when china put in its forced sterilization yeah. of women for health public mm. health reasons yes. so too many people mm. and now they're all embracing this forced mm. medicalization uh. Even even my most fanatical lovey lockdown friends who loved it, you know, having Rosie in the back of their garden and enjoying lockdown, and, and we are so much pulls apart. Mm. They are 100% against mm. forced medicalization yeah. of anyone. And, and they'll be, uh, they want to vaccinate five year old yeah. kids to go down. I think you should be years. very suspicious of anyone. Look, yeah, I think it's a bunch of weirdos yeah. who want to touch this, yeah. this is the crux of this <laughs> argument. People like David Lloyd. Uh, and the million Guardian readers. This is funny the way it's the left Always. that want this authoritarianism, mm. yeah, this yeah. tyranny. Well, they're, the, the they're, they're, they're famously the but, ones that but, normally but, get it. But yeah, yeah. But, but, but this is what they cannot get through their heads, is this. It, it, they, what they believe fervently is the decision to get the vaccine mm. is superior to the decision not to get yeah. the vaccine. It's not. Uh, everybody has the right to make that decision either way. If you want to get the vaccine, absolutely fine. It's a free country. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. Read all the facts, and if you think that's the best for you, have it done. If you read all the facts and you decide not to have it, or even if you don't mm. read all the facts and you decide not yeah. to have it, that is your right. That is not an inferior mm. decision. It is a decision. So then, uh, and, and they, and but then, of course, there are the other people who sit somewhere in the middle who say, well, that's fine. You can make that choice not to have it, but if you don't have it, then you will be restricted yeah, well, in what you'll yeah, be able well, to do. Well, they're wrong. And then, of course they're wrong. No, but that, that, no, that, I understand. That is presupposing yeah. that, the, uh, that the decision not to have the virus, uh, sorry, the vaccine, is inferior. Oh, I know. So no, I know that. why they're doing it. I'm saying that they shouldn't do it. Mm. But what I'm saying is that they think of themselves as being very wise yeah, because they're telling you that you should get it because you'll protect everybody else. Well, that's rubbish, as everybody yeah, knows. And rubbish. I think they also belong to the same group of the kind of curtain twitchers and the snitches, yeah. the people who phoned up on their neighbours. This, I don't think it's a very nice group of people, no. the ones that want to force people to, to take stop. injections. These are the same people then, that would report you for going out during lockdown. You know, demonising people no. who mm. decide not to have the vaccine. Even if they decide not to have the vaccine because they think Bill Gates has put microchips in it. <laughs> and, uh, little well, they can have it. whatever reason they, they want. Exactly right, Mike. The, doesn't the, matter. It doesn't matter what their reason is. It doesn't matter how wrong they might be. Uh, they have the right mm. to make that decision, just as some people who make the decision yeah. to have the vaccine make that decision for the wrong reason. Yeah. Well, it also they have the right to do it. It's a free I mean, what's, what, what's he Not the right to be wrong is the point. You, yeah. you have, but it, sets a re it sends a really dangerous message that the government can force oh, medicalisation. So, so the vaccine lovers, I'm actually a vaccine lover, but I'd never force it on anyone else. But the people who want to may be celebrating Austria now, but 10, 15 years down the line when there's another medicalisation or another vaccine mm. or medicine the government won't force, they'll yeah. have made Well, it even possible. the Austrians aren't celebrating Austria. Yeah. I mean, they're <laughs> having to... I mean, I can't believe that we're now living in a time when people, people are being see, shot at, yeah. right? Yes, By their own the police in the Netherlands. Yeah. Right? Because they didn't have a vaccine. For not having a vaccine. Yeah. I know. I mean, if you'd said that to me 10 years ago, don't worry, Holland, you know, the place everybody yeah. used to go to, uh, to to sit in one of the, you know, cannabis cafes, spliff. have a bit of a spliff, <laughs> hang about the red light district, yeah. have a look in the but windows. It's such a chilled country. Yeah. But but now see, they're shooting at people yeah. for not having a vaccine. But this, yeah. guy David Hello? Lloyd, this guy, David Lloyd, uh, <laughs> he justifies his uh, ludicrously illiberal position yeah. by saying, you know, I've been on the front now and I've seen what COVID what does could that do. Mean, but that's like you and me, Mike, when we're on Fleet Street going, I'll tell you what, that circulation of our newspapers it's really getting low let's force people to buy the papers yeah. by law yeah. at gunpoint yeah, to be yeah, fair yeah. we Just, did try that no, but, you know <laughs> what, didn't work out so well the front line workers thing the front line workers thing is, is really annoying me because there were lots of front line workers yeah. the delivery guys the dustbin men right. but this holy cow how of come NHS, they're not all dead they now hey? have a messiah complex right. and but, they literally but think this is they're the God. thing because what's he going to do next is he going to start patrolling wormwood scrubs and stopping people from playing football you can't play football you might 
end up in hospital. I mean, yeah. this is what they're talking like. It's like, don't get ill, protect the NHS. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry, the NHS yeah. is there to help you when you're ill. Yeah. When you get ill, you go to the doctor. Yeah. The doctor doesn't come to you to tell you how to live your life so you don't have to go to it because yeah. he doesn't know how and to do that. Loads of people. Uh, don't that, ride that thousands bike. Thousands and thousands and thousands All these of cyclists. people have died because they were terrified of bothering the yeah. NHS. Mm. What a pernicious message, mm. protect the NHS, well, the continues girl, to the be. Girl, the girl's allowed girl. That's yeah. Sarah Harding yes. for love. Yeah. And she was like, I didn't want to bother the exactly. NHS, so I didn't go for my breast it's checkup. Pernicious yeah. message. Yeah. Exactly. Outrageous. So, yeah, I'm with Outrageous. You. Now, it's getting a bit serious. This is playing for the it's supposed to be funny, you know. Have you got a funny one for the third one? I hope you have. Yeah, I've um, got a really funny one. I've got a funny one for my second one. It is, of course, the one and only Samantha Price. Yes. Now, for some reason, that's a name that sounds familiar. Is there another Samantha Price somewhere? Sounds, sounds quite sounds, funny. Sounds, yeah, sexy. doesn't it? It does. But this, this is not sexy. This is Samantha <laughs> Price, the headmistress, who is not in any way, shape or form. She's very much twin set and mm. Pearl's Brigade. Um, she's apparently the headmistress of a very famous school called Benenden School yeah. in Kent. Very which posh. apparently is so posh, it costs £16,000 pounds per term. 40,000 per year. So it? if that's three, I know some places call it two terms now, so even if it's only two terms, that's, that's 32 grand. 40 grand a year. 40, 40 grand, grand a year. year definitely. Yeah, I think, well, grand. that's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, Princess I mean, Anne Princess and Rachel Anne went Weiss. There. Rachel went there. Weiss went there. Yeah. Um, I dare say quite a few of your friends probably went there <laughs> at one time or another. But she no. decided uh, to issue a statement, and I can only imagine that she's obviously in fear of losing her job or something because she's done something. Doesn't want to be cancelled. She doesn't want to be cancelled. Probably been caught snogging somewhere. Yeah, probably, yeah. It's very possible. So. No, no. Anyway, no, no, she no, saw no, that's, that's not true. That's a joke. She says it's wrong to dismiss young people demanding change as snowflakes and woke. It's wrong. How is it wrong to use words to describe a group of people who are doing something that you don't actually think is a very good idea? She claims that if people keep slagging them off, they might give up on equality campaigns. Now, oh, there's nothing like going yes, to a £40,000 40, £40, a year school and demanding equality for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, what, are you going to pay for other people to go to yeah, the school? Is yeah. that equal? I mean, I don't imagine there's much equality going on in Benenden. No. Do you? She's but worried also that they're going to give up on their campaigns for sustainability. Good! Yeah. <laughs> good. Well, it, it's not, not enough sustainability it's about for having a lot of money, a lot of spare time. It's the middle class guilt complex. You see it in climate change. Now it's, listen, it's really embarrassing. We've got a lot of money. What, you don't really need a job. So let's join a bandwagon of justice for someone. And actually saying to children, woke is dangerous. Mm. Being woke and politically correct kills, hurts, allows abuse, ring fences, yeah. paedophiles, criminals. Mm -hmm. It is not a good thing being no, woke. It really being isn't. a reasonable, kind person supporting anti-racist right. campaigns. As the fantastic. headmistress being of a, of a girl's school, Thing. Is it not her job to kind of instill these kind of values in the people that she's teaching for £40,000 a year? She says this, I think that if they are consistently dismissed in this way, then what will happen is that they will just give up. Well, she's not teaching them much resilience in this well, yeah, £40,000 a year I don't, school. I don't care anyway. I right. don't care. Well, it it's a free well country. Teaching. I've got the right to call her pupils snowflakes and woke Also, does she I not know to? anything about well, what people do? I don't care do. if they give up. But also, doesn't she know what people do, right? As they go into their 20s and into further maturity, what was such a passion for them will end up by just going by the wayside. Yeah, like, like the, all, the rest well, of us. Like yeah. the rest of us do. You know, yeah. you vote Labour when you're 20, mm. and you vote Tory when you're 30, but we'll, generally speaking. We're also bringing up a very fragile generation. I'll give you an example. At my daughter's school, um, the headmistress did an assembly on Rosie Duffield oh, yeah. and protected her right to free speech to say women had cervixes, blah, blah, blah. Three girls cried in the assembly. Some girls walked Fried. out. Absolutely the horror. <laughs> The horror of free speech and the horror of this woman saying only women had cervixes, they walked out of the assembly. Right. So actually this stuff is dangerous yeah. because what you're saying to girls is don't debate anyone who calls you names, no. run away, yes. instead of saying actually no, I'm not woke, I'm like I this. don't agree it's with you, really so therefore this is what I'm going to say about yeah, it. I mean, she's clearly worried about it. And, and isn't Ms Price really uh, preparing her pupils, her snowflake for woke pupils, for the real world? No, no, no. She's the problem. I mean, she should be telling them, look, it's all great that you're into sustainability inequality campaigns. But when you get out there, outside of those school gates, you might find that real life is a little different. Yeah, they're going to be eating for breakfast, yeah. these girls. It's a shame, because I want robust, she, she's girls. What she's doing, she's, she's the classic uh, uh, manoeuvre by someone who doesn't want to get cancelled, want to play safe in, tomorrow, yeah. in today's modern environment. Uh, she's venerating the young and mm. decrying mm. the old. But you don't want yeah. it in our school. Yeah. Evil, no. cynical also, old people. Also, yeah. one of the reasons, and I'm sure, that, again, I should be told that I'm too old and I should shut up, but, I mean, the reason why you don't let 20-year-olds run the country is because all they do at the moment is burst into tears and sort <laughs> and of... Need a safe space. And need a safe space to go and stand somewhere. Unless because we're triggered. You're not listening to me. Yeah. And then yeah. they turn into Sam Smith. I mean, the 
one thing, the one thing that she does say, which is good, is that she doesn't agree with the kids taking days off school to go and campaign against climate change because she thinks that you might be able to get a better, more, a decent level of productivity by doing something at school. <laughs> but I mean, schools are. I mean, even my kids' school was encouraging them to take the day off yeah. to go if they wanted to go to some Extinction Rebellion march in London. It's, I'm like, you're not taking a day off. No, bloody be joking. Right. All 16 year olds should go out and get a job, number one. Yeah. They should all be working at their local restaurants. None should be right. surfing well, on the Well, my, my, old, my older one's working in a pub. You know, good luck to it. Right, her. right. Mine's at, at, at a restaurant. But the problem is this that we're bringing up a generation who's one day going to make our laws. Yeah. They're one day going to be in government and they can't even take debate. No. It doesn't bode well does for not. us. It does not. I mean, in my, my sister's time and, and Kevin's and mine, I'm sure it was more or less the same. She was always uh, missing assembly on the grounds that she and her friends had stolen some cider from somewhere. <laughs> And they were off <laughs> somewhere down by the back of the tennis courts <laughs> drinking it, you know. <laughs> so oh, your started, I mean, well, I was going to say it started a lifelong <laughs> career of drinking. Um, but no, she went to the Sacred Heart School in Hammersmith, you know, which is now, I think, an independent. But it was quite a good sort of grammar school for girls, Catholic grammar school run by nuns. So naturally, yeah. it was like St. Trinian's. You yeah. know, all the girls were great fun. Um, and I can attest to that personally. But also, not just that, yeah. um, they, were, they, they grew into very successful people. Yeah because they had a proper education and a proper kind of, you know, worldly view of what was going on. Well, if I was at school now, I'd just claim I'd be triggered by everything to be able to skip classes just not and just have in. a day off. Absolutely right. Well, I imagine that's probably going on quite a lot. Right, so, your third. Right, well, it kind of follows on from this, because I think this this plank is slightly worried about being cancelled too, so he's come out with mm. a, a, a slightly ridiculous statement, in my opinion, is Eddie Redmayne. Oh, yes. So, Eddie Redmayne is a sweet English actor. He's a bit of a sort of puiffle. You know, sort of a Hugh Grant, he's, nicey, nicey People boy. quite like him, don't he, they? He is. He's kind Seems of adorable like nice and yeah. cute and he's freckly and he's very sweet. It's another old Etonian. Mm. Uh, yes. They're he's an, they're all the, the wokest lot, the posh lot, because they have the privilege of living in their ivory towers and not dealing yeah. with real he, life. He but anyway. He's prime minister's now producing yes, rubbish actors. Yes, little. Trips. But bless his cotton socks, he's been so terrified, I think, of being cancelled for his the part he played in The Danish Girl. He played a transgender woman, but one of the first women to have uh, reassignment mm. surgery, and he took the part on and now he's apologising for it. He said it was a mistake um, because only transgender women should play the transgender role. Now, there are so many problems with an actor coming out and saying this is what acting is about now. You have to have lived experience yes. of the character yes. to be able to play it. So it's not about acting anymore. You have to be the you character. Have to be yeah. You can't, you the can't character. actually play yeah. the character. <laughs> no, two it's things. ridiculous. Yeah. One, what is acting? Is he was, pretending exactly. to be someone Well, this else? reminds me, I'm sorry to interrupt you, I'll get, <laughs> let you finish the story of, of the, the great story that um, Dustin Hoffman told once oh, when yeah. he was doing Marathon Man with yeah. Laurence Olivier. And, you know, that period where he's being sort of, you know, um, he's being operated on with the dentist's equipment and all this kind of stuff. And he comes in to work on the Monday to the set and he's completely like, you know, filthy, hair's all matted, you know. Um, and Lawrence says to him, dear boy, what have you been doing? And he was like, well, I've just been trying to get into character because, you know, I'm spending time on the street, so I've been sleeping on the streets. And he just went, dear boy, it's called acting. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm at the Carlisle. You know, yeah. <laughs> because that's the point, isn't what, it? what are they getting paid for? Because yeah. what happens to all the films about murderers and rapists? Mm. And do we have to have characters who have been all these horrific Ooh, criminals? God. No, so they can live the experience. And poor, you know, look at Luke Evans. He's a gay guy. He played the role of Gaston in Sleeping Beauty. He'd be out. No, no black woman could play a white role. No, this is ridiculous. Although, although, come out actually, although, like black a although play white roles did you not? Well, this is, this it's is not where, the other way around. This is that's where not allowed. We see woke cannibalism. Yeah, they yeah. eat each other. Yeah, He's yeah. come out saying only. Transgender people. Because was it Anne Boleyn that the, the, the yeah. channel fired? But not one. just Anne yeah. Boleyn. Like every, this whole thing about James Bond as well. Eddie Redmayne's basically come out and said, no, 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 no. Only people of that character must be able to play it with characteristics. So it's woke cannibalism, of course, but what he's doing is making a mockery of acting yeah, as well. Um, right. And it's just getting a bit silly. But for, also, for it's, it's kind of all right, isn't it, for people like him who have made millions from acting yeah. to say, I'm not ever going to do anything now which is going to offend anyone. But well, if you're on your way up and you've literally just come out of drama school yeah. and you've been offered a job in a play yeah. in yeah. the West End for sort of 25 quid a, a, a night or something, you know, you're not going to go, oh, I can't get that, well, I can't take that. that, can you? Like, good actors are now going to be too terrified right. of accepting roles. And we have De Daniel Day-Lewis yeah. with My Left Foot, so you can no longer play disabled people. There's it, no... He's not left-footed. Well, like, what, what, what are, you know, all these silly things. But, but what, what is kind of scary, in a way, is at the time, yeah. Eddie was told by trans groups, this is offensive. Yeah. But he still went ahead and made his millions. It's right. only now a certain film's coming mm. out where he's playing, uh, in, I think it's Incredible Creatures or something, oh, in the yeah. J.K. Rowling books. That's just about to be launched. Okay. That is coming out with this. Oh, by the way, I'm really sorry about that. But, I, I, you know, I don't have any problem with uh, a black actor or an actor. 
matter of color playing Macbeth or something like that. But there does seem to be a problem with uh, white actors playing. Well, it's the double standards. Yeah. Like, like yeah. stick right. to a rule so, for so, everyone. So you, yeah, it's, it, there's no. But uh, this is the thing. I wonder whether no the, whole, uh, the gender argument about the Brits is all very coming together. This show because everything's kind of interrelated. But Perfect. you do Beautiful. wonder if you start there out, going out as a casting director, whether you then have to start thinking, well, I'm not actually going to now have any genders in mind for the character that's going to play Othello. Maybe it will just be a person. Yes. And so that could a be a woman. Yeah, but they will could not be, be given will, that. No, but I Othello you, is not going to be played by someone who's white, I guarantee you. Well, that. it might not be, but it might be played by somebody who's not a bloke. Oh, well, yeah, let's yeah, yeah. yeah. do that. I mean, I don't really like that very much. I, I think that's kind of you stupid. You put us off movies, it's, go, it's going out of your way to be different, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, but that's but what if it they, sells yeah, the what, production... Sorry, hello? That's what's going on. Yeah. Of course they're going out of their way to be different. That's the point, isn't it? But you can only go in one direction yeah, I know. to be different. They're, not going, go out, the they're not going out of their way to let a white person play Othello, though, are they? No. Not, at the, not at the moment. Not at the moment. They're, they're, not, doing that, Mike. they're not doing that, They're not doing that Have you seen the recent CNN article this week about um, the most dangerous thing in America is an angry white man? Oh, yeah. So I just think it's all Actually, about... Actually, it's not, this because hate... that guy that drove the red SUV yes, wasn't, wasn't but... white. I know, but these are the articles being spun out yeah. at the moment. This kind of, it's OK to, to fuel hatred against white men. And I think we, Gee, in the acting God. world, in the singing yeah. world, everything is kind of a bit about stick it to the white guy. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm only in favour of that, to be honest. Yeah. I'll stick it to him. <laughs> now, we're running out of time because you've been rabbiting on too much. So get <laughs> Get your third one out of the way quickly. My third one uh, is Andrew Marr, who's, <laughs> who's quitting, Talking of angry who's quitting white the BBC <laughs> after 21 years. I'm angry. Uh, because he needs to uh, re-find his voice, to Does find he? his voice again. Oh, yeah. not left wing enough. So the BBC, has, <laughs> the BBC has suppressed what he feels what? and what he thinks. Well, you can't say what you, you think. You must be joking. Well, you can't think what you can say what you think. Well, you can if you're Andrew Marr, because you know he's only what he thinks. No, not really. I mean... You know, I, I get his point. Well, I is mean, he going to come secretly out in favour of UKIP or something? Well, no, <laughs> no. Please, he's wanted to be, able, be the He's best. wanted to join the Reform <laughs> Party for yes, a long time. Gonna, That's gonna what gonna he says. Richard he needs Post. to find his voice again. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he feels uh, like so many people at the BBC. Uh, he didn't actually use these words, but in essence, uh, like the rest of them there, he's been infantilised by a system that doesn't allow them to express mm. their opinions. I think the BBC ought to recalibrate that and just let them do You know, they were so desperate for us not to Brexit. If they'd have allowed their presenters to say what they think, maybe we wouldn't have Brexited, but because they like to pretend they're impartial, nobody believes they are. No. They like to pretend it. Their presenters aren't allowed to say what they think, aren't allowed to express their opinion. But they're allowed to make fun of people they don't agree with. Uh, well, Andrew Marr is breaking out of the, sh the shackles of that straitjacket. Oh, yes. uh, and he wants brain, to be able to speak so out on what, what he really believes in. And guess what topic he wants wants to really speak out about, really get to something grips that nobody's it's talking something, about. It's something that no one is talking about, and thank God he's going to be able to awake us to the importance of this issue, climate change. <laughs> God <laughs> almighty, oh, shut oh, up, Andrew. Oh, nobody cares also, what you think about also, climate change. Also, as well change. as going to work for the world's worst radio station, he's going to work for Classic FM as well. Yeah. So he's going to do a music oh, show with yeah. classical music. Yeah. Oh, bless him. He could have done that at Radio 3. But, I mean, but he wanted the, to take a step back. <laughs> but this is the extraordinary oppression of this mass, swirling mass of groupthink. Mm -hmm. You know, COP26, Prince Charles, Prince William, uh, Bill Gates, Boris Johnson, uh, Extinction Jeff Rebellion, Bezos, Insulate, uh, Jeff Alok Bezos, Sharma. all shouting from the same hymn book. You know, I couldn't work out, what well, what are you protesting about? They're saying the same thing inside the hall. Yeah. Uh, groupthink, everybody thinks the same thing. So Andrew Marr actually thinks he can make an important contribution to the climate change debate. Here's what you want to know, Andrew, about climate change. Loads of us couldn't give a damn about it. OK. <laughs> we well, thank you very much for that. Uh, well, my final one, we've mentioned it already once, is Adele. So she's demanded that Spotify take out the shuffle button so that when you're listening to her album, you have to listen to it in the order that she wants you to listen to it in, right? Now... What? Could somebody tell me what the shuffle button's for? What is the point Poor of that? I never, I never understood. Come on, Kev. I know it means... what it does. <laughs> What's it for? Well, it's if you don't want to listen to the, all the songs in the same order all the time. Well, who cares about that? that? Well, lots of people do. Yeah, but, uh, no, they don't. I don't know anyone who's ever pressed well, the shuffle button. All right, on let's the put it this way. If you have a playlist, you know what that is? Yes, of course I know. Right. I know what the shuffle button is as well. See, I'm angry saying, white men. I'm just okay, saying, angry white men. I'm just saying, what's the point of it? Well, the point of it is, for example, if you have a playlist, right, and you listen to it in the car, 
if you don't press the shuffle button, it plays all the songs in the same order all the time. Well, if you've I've got, got a playlist, what well, do you think I am? The point is, 16. Kev, well, it's I've very got a playlist. Precious. Why don't you, you, why don't you have a playlist? Well, like, because oh, I'm not a spotty faced teenager. Adele is supposed Dear to be me. Adele from the streets, from the block. It's in Adele it. in it. Yeah, in from it. Tottenham. And then she's all princessy. And she did this. Right. And then she did this. I really like her. An audience. Well, a lot of people really like her. but And this is why we call it Plank of the Week. This doesn't mean we don't like something. It just means they're a bit planky, right? She does this thing, an audience with Adele, which was filmed at London Palladium before a star-studded audience of fans, you know. Emma Thompson gets up, oh. having flown in from Los Angeles, talking of climate change, to say, oh, was there ever anyone in your life that was an inspiration to you? And, you know, they're all asked to ask sort of any, uh, any interesting questions. I haven't seen for and a then, long time. And then, <laughs> and then it turns out that it was a teacher. I haven't and seen, then, I'll never do what And then it turns her. out that the teacher's also in the audience. I mean, who would, guessed, who would have guessed it? Who would have guessed it? What a coincidence. And then she got up on the stage and had a big hug. Oh, my God, and, I totally cried at that point, know, by the way. She goes, oh, can I get your phone number? off the teacher, who she obviously knew was going to be there, who yeah. she obviously presumably has had a conversation with yeah, and presumably just... has got the phone of number already. There was, phone right? number. there was nothing contrived about it. I mean, all. and all of those... And I know that people like watching that sort yeah. of stuff, but it's just, it's not for me. I can't do it because it's all contrived. And as I say, Emma Thompson flies in uh, from L.A., to ask this question, then she's dancing, and it's like everybody. I mean, Piers Morgan actually was quite funny. He was saying he would ask a question because he wasn't there. He, I presume, because ITV don't particularly like him at the moment. Yeah. Um, and uh, he said, "Well, I would ask you why have you got all these sycophantic sort of celebrities yeah. that follow you around? They're all because there. Was they're all those... there. Yeah, they all should have been. They should have been. Samuel L. Jackson right there. was there. David yeah. Tennant. You know, David Tennant. In the, you, you, you had to be oh, there. All the love. But anyway, this nasty criticism of Adele, uh, mm. Mike, if I may say so. Is typical of someone like you. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Very good. Uh, somebody said to me, you know, she's done 21, 25, 30. Can't wait for 60 when she's going. <laughs> when are you 90. coming back from the pub? No, no. She'll, she'll be 60 going, I'm all alone. Also, it, it won't be so much well rolling in the deep, but if we're rolling in something else. <laughs> rolling in the, the wheelchair. Yeah. Rolling, rolling in the bath own. chair. Because yeah. if she's so useless with men, I mean, she clearly can't, can't have boyfriends that do very well. Absolutely she's right. Someone old room. like you. Yeah. Yeah. I know, she, she does need to mix it up a bit. I would be terrified of a boy dating her right now because you know you'll be in the next album, her slagging That's you right, up. yeah. And also, I don't want to talk about my divorce. I'm just going to write a lot of songs about yeah. it and then play them to my son so that he can know what it was like. Yeah, I know. Very it's good. It is a bit mean. I like Adele, so but she needs out... to change her subject matter. She's going really out with does. a sports promoter. Yeah. The moment, is it? Well, I he's mean, very well. She wealthy. must be going to, you're next. Yes, I you're know. Next. He's going to be like this, you know, <laughs> being very careful of everything he says. Or maybe he wants to be her next yeah. album. Right, maybe. So now we're going to find out exactly who is going to become Plank of the Week. Now we've got to pick the uh, the one from the three, as it were. So, Kevin, why don't you tell Belinda who your three are? My three were the parole board... Dr. David Lloyd, the medical fascist, and uh, Andrew Marr, the BBC dork. Oh, so, so hard. I think I'm going to have to go for the medical fascist. Yeah, it's gonna have good to be choice. David. David Lloyd. Dr. Yeah. David Lloyd, very good. OK, David. so you tell me your so three. I've got the Brits um, cancelling female and male, um, yeah. the Toronto School Board cancelling yeah. Yazidi girls, and Eddie Redmayne. I'm going to go with the Brits. I think yeah, it has to the be Brits. the Brits. Yeah. And so you want to pick one of mine. Which one? I've got Prince Charles. I've got Samantha Price and I've got Adele. Uh, well, I think we choose Adele. It's going to be very, very unpopular. And, you know, I like to keep it popular. With I know you do like to keep yeah, in with yeah. people. In with yeah. But yeah. Uh, for, for his ongoing, uh, as displayed at COP26, <laughs> which he arrived by jet at, for his ongoing, <laughs> for his ongoing uh, climate change hypocrisy, mm -hmm. uh, the gas guzzling, planet destroying... Cheese guzzling. Yeah. Cheese guzzling. Planet destroying Prince of Wales, Prince yeah. Charles. Okay, so the Brits, Prince Charles, and Dr. David Lloyd. That's oh, a good list. Yeah, it's a good list. Yeah, Those are the good. final three. So, what are we thinking? I like Lloyd. Yeah, I think actually. Do you? We've got to take a stand against. Uh... That's a big call, though. To make but one individual doctor message. carry, well, carry the, Brits, the, the Brits is good though. Isn't I think the Brits, Brits is the could winner. Set the yeah. tone, and I think it? him yeah. coming second is yeah. pretty. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with you, with you, David, then yeah. yeah, with you. I mean, even though I think the Brits are going gender free is a good thing. Yeah, I'm actually going to vote <laughs> the plank of the week. So how does that work? Yeah, I'm not well, quite sure. I, I must think be the confused. Brits, in hope that it's half the time it is next year, and the speeches are half as long. Well, I was saying it's actually earlier on today. They could just have one award. Yeah, just call it the Brit. Yeah, the Brit award. And then you call a load of people in, right? And you go. 
go. Right, here it is. Here's the, here's the, three, here's the three nominations. Uh, so and so. Oh, Adele's won it. There you go. That's yeah. it. That's the end of the, the show. Adele's going to win yeah. everything anyway, let's be honest. The Brits. <laughs> the Brits. I like it. I, I like think it. that's good. All right, so the Brits, uh, number one. Uh, we will say Prince Charles, number three. Dr. David Lloyd, number two. Yeah. Quite a good one, that. So well done to the Brits for ma managing to get yourselves on the front page of the Sun uh, this week, but also to become Plank of the Week as well. Absolutely brilliant. Well played. And uh, Kevin O'Sullivan, thank you very much indeed. Belinda, lovely to see you again. We'll see you next time. Thank you.